Now, the skill heaps. Um, like I said before, the relationship between the skill heap and the lattice heap is very much similar to that between the ABL tree and a splay tree. So, what is the relationship between ABL tree and splay tree? Do you still remember? Um, in ABL tree, we must keep an eye on its balance factor, right? Be careful whenever the balance factor shows that is the tree is no longer balanced, we must do a kind of rotation uh, to uh, adjust the tree structure, right? That's for ABL tree. But for a splay tree, it's much simpler. In a splay tree, we don't care about whether it's balanced or not. We simply blindly making rotations, right? So that's the difference between the AVL tree and the splay tree. And we can consider the splay tree as a simpler version of an AVL tree, right? So similarly, uh, skill heaps are also a simple version of the leftist heaps. It's simpler in the sense that we don't care about the NPL at all, right? In the leftist heap, we must keep an eye on the NPL and it's only one that there's something wrong with the NPL that we decide to swap its two children. But in a skill heap, we don't care about its NPL. We just blindly swapping the children. And therefore it's called a simple version of the leftist heaps. And the target is what? Do you still remember the target of a splay tree? It's the same. Say any m consecutive operations take at most big O of m times log n time. It means that even though a simpler strategy means that for the skill heap, we might obtain a very long right pass. In the worst case, that pass can be big O of n. That's the worst case. But the amortized time for each operation is sufficiently good. It's going to be big O of log n. Okay, so here is the merging strategy for skill heap. We always swap the left and right children, except that the largest of all the nodes on the right pass doesn't have its children swapped, but uh, that's not important. Okay, what's important is that we always swap the left and right children, and there is no NPL involved. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, this part, say the largest of all the nodes on the right pass, doesn't have its children swapped, is not really a special case, but a natural stop in the recursions. We're going to see what it means. Now let's take a look again at these two heaps. If we treat them as skill heaps, the merging process works like this. Step one, still, we compare the two roots and keep the smaller one. While the smaller one is kept, we just swap its left and right children. And therefore, step one is to keep three and turn its left subtree into its right subtree. So we get a partial solution like this. And then recursively merge these two heaps. Now let's try to follow what is inside the recursion here. Okay, when we enter the recursive call for merging these two heaps, what is supposed to be done? Again, we compare these two roots, right? And keep the smaller one and turn its left child into its right child. All right, and continue to do what? To merge these two subtrees and keep seven and swap children. And next, we're gonna compare these two heaps. Okay, so we're gonna keep eight and swap children. And finally, we get 18 as the last node or the largest of all the nodes on the right past. That's this 18. In this case, we are merging 18 with another empty heap. And therefore, 
That is the simplest return case. We simply return 18 without swapping its children. So we simply return this tree, and this is the final result we obtain. So notice that this one is the last node that contains the largest key along the right path. When the recursive call enters this case, it's going to be a natural stop of the recursion since we're merging one heap with another empty heap. So this tree will be returned directly without swapping its children. All right, so in this case, it looks like uh, the resulting tree is indeed leftist, but uh, keep in mind that this is only a lucky case, all right? This is not always the case. And let's see another example. Now let's insert 15 into this heap. It's like merging two heaps, except that one heap contains only one node, all right? So what's going to happen? We're going to compare 3 and 15 and keep 3 and swap children. All right. And then recursively merge 15 with this subtree. Right. So compare 15 with 10. We keep 10 and swap children. And then recursively merge 15 with 14. And we're going to uh, keep 14 and swap children. And finally, attach 15 as the last node. So is this tree a leftist tree? Not really. All right. So it's not guaranteed that the resulting heap will be a leftist heap, which means it's no longer guaranteed that its right path is locked in. Well, the uh, iterative version is well, actually, uh, quite similar to the recursive version since I have already shown you the details within each recursion. So it's another way to show you that the iterative version is actually equivalent uh, to the recursive version. Iteratively, uh, what we do is we simply merge the two right paths, right? And compare them one by one, and every time after the comparison, we'll keep the smaller one and swap children no matter what, right? So the first, we keep three and swap children. And compare these two, we would keep six and swap children. And keep seven, keep eight, and finally, keep 18. There are two things to be noticed here. The first thing is about the advantage of uh, skill heaps uh, is that there's no extra space required to maintain the now pass length. And therefore, no tests, no if else, are required to determine when to swap children. We just blindly swap them. Another thing is, it is still an open problem to determine precisely the expected right pass length of both leftist and skill heaps. What we do know now is that for a leftist heap, the worst case of the right path length is big O of log n. But the expected right path length, expected number is some kind of average number. Uh, uh, but it's not clear about the average case. I'll say the expected case. Uh, we might get something that is better than log n, but we don't know. And for the skill heap, we're going to prove that the amortized right path length is still log n, but it's not clear about the expected right path length.